your questions. I've just turned on the recording, so um, we'll get ourselves underway. Um, for those of you who've just come and joined the room, my name is Mark Brown. Um, there's a picture of me there actually in the conference venue, uh, and I am the conference chair. So in this case, we've run a few other webinars where a couple of my colleagues have facilitated them. In this case, uh, you're talking to the chair, so uh, if I can't answer you a question, then you might be a bit concerned, or I'll at least have some attempt to be able to answer your questions. What we have planned is just sort of three bits, um, but primarily this is really about uh, responding to any questions you might have. There is a chat box that you're able to use. I'm conscious that some of you may not be familiar with Zoom. If you can find the chat box and you want to write a question there, then I, I've got that open on my screen so I can um, either respond or just um, note it and, and talk about uh, the questions as they um, fit into what I've got planned here. I want to start very briefly and just give you a bit of a sense of the venue because um, preparing your presentation, it always helps to know the type of venue you're in. Um, in part, that was just in case there are a few latecomers because the real thing I suspect that most of you are here for is just to hear about the presentation guidelines um, and to, as I said, respond to some of your questions, some of the logistics. At the very end, I um, have a few suggestions for you. We have something coming out shortly further. Uh, I don't want to, in uh, probably a very uh, English, Anglo-Saxon expression, teach you how to suck eggs here. But if you are not as experienced as a presenter, um, there are just some things that are useful. To be honest, even as a quite experienced presenter, it's helpful to remind yourself of these because um, you can get into some bad habits. So without further ado, um, uh, the one, I guess, overriding message I want to leave with you, and it's not one that I'm known to practice very well personally, but the audience never complained of a presentation or um, speech uh, that end up being too short. And in fact, you could almost say that's probably relevant to this webinar as well. So I'll try not to take too long um, and we'll get right to the, the um, key part of um, the purpose of the webinar. Ultimately also, when I said that you will have um, some tips that we'll be sharing with you via email and that maybe at the end of this um, discussion, you will have your own um, tips. And so uh, whilst you're listening to me, um, I hope we can have a bit of conversation, but I am focused very much on trying to give you some information about the conference. Feel free to drop in your best tip in the chat box so others um, can share from your experience. So that's a thought for you as I am doing most of the talking to start with at least. And as I said, if anyone has just arrived, and put those questions in the chat box, or by all means, feel free to turn your microphone on and ask a question, uh, interact with me, it's no problem whatsoever. So without further ado, um, this is just a very brief sort of warming up as much as anything for me, as much as it is for you. A little bit about the venue. I haven't really got time to ask you all individually as to whether you've been to Dublin, kind full of the audience that will probably listen to this webinar. So I'll just talk a little bit about the fact that um, we have two real events going on, the pre-conference event. Um, there's an arrow on the bottom of the screen which points to where the Dublin Convention Centre is. That's the main conference centre right on the Liver, uh, Liffey, um, really in the heart of uh, Dublin. But the pre-conference event is at one of Dublin City University's campuses. We have three academic campuses um, and it's at the campus that's closest to the city. And the Google map there is just showing you that it is quite walkable. Um, I personally do that walk on a number of occasions and you can really do it in about 30 minutes, depending upon where you start. And um, Google is a bit forgiving in terms of speed. Um, but most people will probably grab a taxi on the Sunday. I won't talk too much about the pre-conference because I'm not sure if many of you have registered for that. We've got very strong registrations for the pre-conference event. Here's just a little bit about the St. Patrick's campus. It's primarily the home of our Institute of Education and education at Dublin City University is a very strong discipline. We have about four and a half thousand education students um, covering from early childhood right through to adult education. Um, and this was historically home of the St. Patrick's College of Education, a very um, tradition, famous college of education in Ireland that's now part of the university, but the campus also has other activities as well. 
So enough said about that, but it'll be a, a great uh, pre-conference with I think probably around or close to 200 people will probably be participating in the various events. And if you are interested in any of the pre-conference events, jump in and uh, register for those now. They're only um, 25 euro in some cases for doctoral students, they're, they're less. And the doctoral research symposium has been extended to the full day because of uh, sheer demand with over 50 registrations. Um, Dublin itself, as I've already indicated with the Google Map and the Convention Center, you can see the Convention Center there lit up in the bottom in blue, right on the river, on the river, sorry. And um, it's really an iconic um, venue for us. It's Europe's one again, Europe's award is the best meeting and conference um, center for 2019. Um, if you're already familiar with Dublin, then this is a bit ho-ha. So um, nonetheless, this is the sort of iconic shot that you'll get at night. One would hope that that's what we'll get in November. It shouldn't be too cold, but it won't be as warm as, as it is now. Um, good to see some of those tips coming through in the chat box too. Um, here's how when you enter the convention center. So it's very modern. It's uh, pretty much a state-of-the-art facility. Um, here's a view from the level that we will be on uh, for the conference. The whole conference will be on one level, level one. I'll show you a map in a second. So some great views of Dublin as well. Um, so the convention centre has, I think it is three levels, is it there? Um, if you count the ground level, and as I said, we will, the whole conference will be on level one. Um, that gives you a little bit of an insight. And whilst it's without the context, perhaps not that helpful, at least that um, floor plan there shows you the, the number of sort of breakout rooms we have. And I'll just touch on those briefly because some of you will be no doubt scheduled in quite large rooms and others might be in quite small rooms. Um, a little bit of the luck of the draw, but actually more around the uh, interest in the theme, um, how many speakers and other things which I can elaborate on. Um, just to give you a sense, that'll be the main plenary space as an example. Um, there'll be quite a hopefully active exhibition space um, because ultimately whilst giving a presentation is important at a conference, it's really about meeting and talking with people and we've designed the, co the conference with that in mind as much as possible. Um, here's one of the larger rooms to give your presentation in. Perhaps a bit scary if you've only got 10 people in the room. We hope that that's not the case. And um, we certainly have a good uh, size uh, number of registrations at this point. So we would expect the conference to have at least 800 delegates. Um, probably more, but time will tell over the next few weeks. One of the other rooms, um, something I'll point out shortly, but make sure you develop your slides in 16-9 resolution or ratio actually, to be more accurate. Um, if that doesn't mean anything, I can answer and elaborate. Um, but you can see that the venue is laid out with all of the latest technology and um, has technical support in each room. It's one of the advantages of using this kind of facility. Um, just another one of the rooms, slightly smaller. Um, smaller again, and then right down to quite small where you probably only have a capacity of about 25. So um, I hope um, there will be some logic in the way that we schedule people and some rooms will be better for discussion than others. And that's probably all I wanted to do just briefly to give you a little insight because that's not really that helpful in terms of designing your paper, but hopefully having a sense of the footprint, um, the type of room you're in, and obviously one of the tips, seeing that there are a couple of tips there, it's always helpful to be in the room before you talk, if only to test your presentation, but just to get a sense of what the room is like and whether you need to be podium bound or not, hopefully the latter. Um, and of course, at the end of the day, you'll walk away from the convention center with that kind of view um, and hopefully no, none of the uh, famous Dublin soft rain. So I'll stop just briefly and see if there's any questions either in the chat box or if you want to um, turn your microphone on. Otherwise, we'll get straight into talking about the presentations themselves. No problem if you haven't got a microphone. Uh, hopefully you can find the chat box, but if not, no one's um, signaling one way or the other. So I'm just going to continue because I'm conscious of um, really giving you as much information in as short a possible time. So moving on, if my screen will work. 
one of the great joys of doing a webinar. There we go. The presenter guidelines. So this is really, I think, the, the heart of what we wanted to share with you today. And there are um, a couple of things, as you saw on the orientation slide, the outline slide that we want to cover here. Firstly, to give you a sense that the conference has a pretty uh, large and uh, wide variety of paper offerings. In total, we almost had 700 submissions. Um, at the moment, uh, there are 577 papers under the different categories that are identified there. Um, one of the great challenges we've had, because we know by the number of sheer volume of emails that people are itching to hear when um, you will be presenting your particular paper. And if you haven't done so already, you can email um, Judy at Happenings, her contact details, Happenings is the event management company we're working with, to put your request in. We have a long spreadsheet of requests for people with different travel requirements and the like. One of the challenges, um, and the aim is to have that ready today, I suspect it'll be more like Monday, the full program is with people coming from over 50 countries and a large um, number of those delegates requiring visas. We've needed to just wait to see that we get visa confirmation because otherwise the program uh, could change many times before it actually gets to being a little bit more stable and we didn't feel there was much value in letting you know about your particular talk date for your talk or time if then it suddenly changes and changes and changes again. So quite a logistical challenge just managing that as well as making sure that uh, people have confirmed their registrations. But the aim is to get that information of the full program on the website and emailed to you as soon as possible. Um, also on the paper um, submissions and generally about presenter guidelines, you're going to be receiving an email today we would have liked it to have gone out earlier in the week, but we've just been holding off because there's one little crucial piece of information we're waiting for the venue to confirm for us in the email with our presenter guidelines. Uh, only two minutes before I started this talk, uh, I just checked to see whether we had had those, uh, that particular issue resolved. I understand we'll hear um, within the hour. So you should be getting, if you've put a submission in, you should be getting an email today with quite detailed notes around your presentation guidelines. So this is really just intended to give you a snapshot of those and um, give you a sense of what you're part of at this fairly large international conference. So I'm gonna work through from the full papers down to the virtual papers. Um, some of you, again, if you've got questions, jump in um, because you might not all be presenting or I doubt very much presenting each of the categories. But this is an example of the uh, PDF that you'll get along with the email um, detailing information about your full paper. In the case of full papers, just to highlight a few things, um, one of the great challenges, of course, is you would probably want 30 minutes if you could in an ideal scenario, but it's just not possible when we have 11 breakouts, um, 10 running in parallel, and with so many papers. So it is a limit of 20 minutes. That's inclusive of question time. Um, we're not stipulating too precisely that you must stop at 15 minutes, but we will say that our session chair and every session will have a, a chair who will have had um, briefing notes and will have met before the conference. And they will stop you um, after 20 minutes because it's unfair on, on other delegates. Um, the one thing that's really important, if not the sub theme, because most of the um, papers will be linked into one of the sub themes. Sometimes those themes are a little artificial and on occasions we've decided actually so we don't silo the sub themes have some integrated sessions quite deliberately. But the thing I think I would want to uh, really emphasize in your talk is to come back in some way, whether it be at the introduction or at the end or both, to the overarching conference theme of transforming lives and societies. It's very easy with the new technologies we have to sometimes lose sight of the end purpose we might have in mind. And, um, those of you who might be familiar with some of my talks, I, I often borrow a quote saying, um, and I could use anything here, but in this case, I'll use online learning. Online learning should be in the service of big ideas. It's not the big idea itself. And so this conference very much is focused around the big ideas associated with what we can do with new technologies in education, a very close association in, and link with the sustainable development goals, 
And I can let out a little secret now that um, next week we'll be announcing that UNESCO has um, formally partnered with the conference um, because of that link. As I've said previously, slides best put in 16-9 ratio. What that means is the oblong size, um, elongated, widescreen, you might call it. Um, and for uh, full papers, you don't need to bring, um, you don't need to send us your um, slide deck in advance. You can install that um, in, as in a venue like this. They're very well set up, but it does need to be installed at the presenter desk. You can't just go and install it onto the computer in the room because everything's networked and, and they just won't let you do that. So that's one of the downsides because you may want to tweak your talk if you're a, a little later in the conference. Still no problem doing that, but probably wise to install it on the first day. And if you do want to make a few changes because you've seen something that someone else has talked about, then you just go and update it. We're asking you, um, it's not essential because we will do this, but you will have all been given a paper submission number and then just end that with, in this case, full paper or depending on your um, the nature of your presentation. Obviously, test your presentation in advance. Um, be careful about using any uh, non-standard fonts. That's sometimes a trap that you can fall into because the machines, they will be PCs rather than Macs. Uh, I'm a Mac user myself. There's a little trick that you learn over the years that generally means everything comes across, but I'm telling you probably, as I said earlier, to suck eggs if you don't understand the importance of testing your presentation. Every room will have a clicker and that means I would strongly encourage you not to be stuck behind a podium. You can walk around the room depending on the size. That certainly helps with a level of interactivity and connection with your audience. So moving on to concise papers, there's nothing coming through at this point in questions. There's not a lot different for me to say. Um, you may see there, um, because of the number of people we have coming in particular from parts of the developing world, um, it just emphasizes the conference is in English. I guess that's one of the uh, downsides. We're in Europe and, and part of being in Europe is being multilingual. Um, we'll have a number of student ambassadors throughout the conference who will at least be able to speak more than one language. Um, but just as you can appreciate for an international conference, we are asking people to converse in English. Um, not much different on this slide other than a concise paper is what it says. Concise. 15 minutes in total. If I was designing, um, I would probably be, and our suggestion to you is to design your slide deck for 10 minutes and leave time for questions and discussion. Um, of course, uh, people choose to take the full 15 minutes and that might not actually be the best value for your paper because coming to a conference is not just presenting, it's about making the links and connections with those in the audience for the follow-up conversations. In fact, it would be a very expensive exercise if all you were doing is coming to the conference to talk for 15 minutes and that was it. The 15 minutes is a mechanism for you, as I see it, to really get your work known in a shorter time so that you can follow up those conversations with the people who have an interest elsewhere. And in this case, it's a world conference, so it may not be the audience as small that you might be used to in a European sense or whether it be a, you're from down under. Don't think there's much more I need to add here unless there's any questions coming through. Um, lightning talks will be a very interesting format. Um, might be quite challenging for some people, so I'll just take a couple of minutes to elaborate because as you saw, we have a, quite a large number of lightning talks. Um, this concept of the lightning talk is going to be drawing on uh, it, what I have described in the presenter guidelines as an infamous Irish tradition known as Gasta. Um, and I've just acknowledged Dr. Tom Farley um, from Turley for his um, work in making this quite famous here in Ireland. The term gaster is really for a very quick, clever, smart, snappy presentation. In fact, just summarizing, if you're not familiar with this already, just five minutes, um, you're going to be um, back to back with probably no more than 10 in a session. Uh, our intention is to record these um, so they're available um, and you also get the opportunity for a much bigger echo in terms of your presentation. Um, the snappy pace, um, you'll probably have a clock counting down on the screen. 
Um, and so it's a little bit a version without wanting to make this sound like it's in edutainment or uh, entertainment. It's your version of a Dragon's Den approach to doing a pitch, snappy, quick overview of what you're involved in. But very much again with this view that it's a chance for you to get others who might be working in the same place, give them the opportunity to come and talk with you later. And in this case, as I said, by way of the echo, I'm going to um, mention that towards the end in a few more minutes, um, the opportunity of coming to a conference goes well beyond the short five minutes if you're clever about how you maximize. It will be strict timekeeping. Um, and in this case, most importantly, because of some of the logistics associated with putting everything together on the computers in advance, we are asking for your lightning talks um, before the conference. A little bit of wriggle room there, but it really is important for us to be able to make sure they all work and they can go back to back um, without much delay. So it's not many slides. We make a suggestion of um, maybe no more than 12 slides. If you think about five minutes, 30 seconds a slide, um, we're not going to be hard and fast in enforcing that, but that's a pretty uh, important consideration because otherwise you'll be asked to stop halfway through your presentation if you're not careful. Um, there is a question there with regard to font size and use of images. I do have some suggestions. <clears throat> We're probably only a couple of minutes away from the slide I have about that. So let me just move on to the digital posters because I think issues around size uh, and uh, font use apply for all of the style of presentations. Um, it's actually the digital posters that have been holding us up from sending this information to you. We're um, taking a little bit of a risk, I think. Um, this is a, a new format that the convention center have never used before. Um, you'll be getting some information about us shortly about our commitment to sustainability. The convention center itself was the world's first sustainably built convention center. Um, so we do see the digital posters as an opportunity to be a little more sustainable practically, so you don't have to bring a poster with you. You most definitely don't have to bring a printed poster. Um, and then to walk the talk in some respects of digital learning or digital technologies. If you can see the photo there of the photo board. You'll get that if you've submitted a poster in the guidelines as well. Um, everyone over the course of the conference uh, with a poster will be assigned a time to be able to be available by their poster. Those times are run throughout the day over the four days of the conference. Again, we'll be scheduling to work around your uh, commitments if you've made those known to us. Uh, we'll do our best, I have to say. I can't say we'll do that perfectly. Um, and then in this case, the uh, file type needs to be a JPEG. And if you have any problems whatsoever in preparing your digital poster, we've prepared a template poster in PowerPoint so all you need to do when you receive that, I expect it to come later today, is effectively get rid of the content in it, but keep the file size and, and just add your own content. You'll see it's in portrait size, um, no animation or videos, unfortunately. The technology doesn't have the uh, ability to play those. You'll find they, they probably won't animate. Um, and again, we need the posters, um, given they're only a one JPEG document um, before the conference because this is not as simple as just plugging a USB stick into the side of the post, uh, projector or poster board. We have to do that through the convention center's network and a similar um, naming um, convention. So I think my next slide here, um, I wanted to go before I get to the more generic points about size and, and other suggestions. Um, virtual papers, um, you will have seen we have uh, about 20 or so. I wouldn't be surprised to have, see us have more virtual papers. In part, this is our commitment to sustainability. It's the first time virtual papers have been used at this conference. But also, um, we're very conscious that not everyone has the funding to be able to come to such a major conference as this. It's not a cheap conference. I'm sure you're aware of that. It's not a conference I should add as an aside that will be making any profit from um, the activity. In fact, probably the opposite. But nonetheless, the virtual paper is our effort to walk the talk because it's a little ironic if we were having a conference about online learning 
and um, we all had to come uh, to be in one location. I won't elaborate on the virtual papers now, partly because of time and partly because there's a little bit of detail still to come there um, and I don't want to give people the wrong information. But the virtual papers, we hope, will be a nice addition to the conference and we're committed to trying to really integrate virtual papers and virtual participants as much as possible in today's age with the back channel and social media and the conference app. Um, it shouldn't matter that you're not on site. So. Um, before I give you, lastly then, before I give you those um, little tips from my perspective about how you prepare uh, a good presentation, some basic things and talk about importance of font size and the like, you may have seen in the conference newsletter this week, and if you haven't seen the newsletter, it's available from the conference website or Twitter or our LinkedIn. Um, it's full of lots of information coming out fortnightly and there's an archive on the website under the news link. This week we just published um, what we hope are some very light guidelines for your rights and responsibilities as a conference delegate or participant. Uh, not everyone, I should add, has taken kindly to these. It might be a little overly PC or corporate, but we did a Twitter poll earlier in the week, and generally speaking, most people see this as just something to make explicit, um, and we hope that people will enter into the spirit in part because we have social events that involve alcohol and we also have a number of delegates coming from parts of the world where alcohol is not something they um, drink or indulge in. We just wanted to remind people about the importance of respecting other um, people's uh, viewpoints and embracing diversity. So enough said, I'm gonna push on. I won't stop right there for questions because the questions that are there at the moment, um, apart from the one just come through about the app, I'll touch on shortly. Just some of those presentation suggestions. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list. I could, would need many slides for this, um, but I do do a lot of presentations and I wouldn't say I always get it right. Um, so even I, when I went and did a Google search to find some tips to prepare to go into this, thought, gee, I need to think about that more. And the first thing, less is more, is that point I started with. Um, that's a really tough one because you really find it hard not to put that slide, not to put that key point in. For full papers, you know what? It's in the full paper. So you don't need to say it all. Um, really what you want to do, and I work my whole academic career around threes. What are the three main points that you want to convey? Keeping it simple. Um, because if you've got more than three main points, most people can't remember more than the three. I certainly don't um, have an ability to do that. So hanging it around your three key main points. And then um, this is a matter of personal style. Not everyone from an academic tradition would agree with what I'm about to say, but increasingly like, the movement in the field that we work in, people are moving much more to using visual images of one form or another or metaphors. You know what, you don't really need that list of bullet points. You just need an image to trigger you for the points because you know your work well. Um, sometimes those bullet points of the list is for you, not for your audience. They don't necessarily need the bullet points. And if you're using them as your speech notes, then it's really the wrong use of a presentation medium. Um, again, might be disrespectful to say practice your timing, but for those of you with concise papers in particular or lightning talks, that's pretty crucial. And in some respects, um, saying less can actually be much more impactful. The more you say, I'm in danger of doing this here, um, the less it is easy to see what your central thesis is and what those three key points might be. Some of you will want to show off your um, initiatives, your innovations, new websites that you've developed. I would be strongly encouraging you to do those as screenshots or um, embedded videos if you really want to get a little more um, high tech, depending on how much time you have. It is a recipe, a bit like saying, don't use children and animals in shows, a recipe for disaster if you're trying to do a live demo. Yes, Wi-Fi will be in all the rooms, but Murphy's Law, and in this case, it's probably ACT, I use that expression here in Ireland, usually applies. Um, I mentioned previously about just try not to stand behind the podium. Actually, one of the some things I see, we've got a few women here listening, without uh, wanting to sound disrespectful or stereotypic, 
I always think that podium designers must be men because they're typically quite high. Um, and there are occasions where I have seen and not only women are short, so please be forgiving with that comment, but it's awful when you see someone hidden behind the podium, um, especially sometimes when they're so huge. Um, so just something to be mindful of. What we've suggested in the written notes um, that you're going to receive is because question time is so tight, you might want to be proactive here and end with the question. Usually, it's a cliche, I know, but there will be more questions than answers as a consequence of your presentation. So maybe leave that question out there for people to pick up on for the brief discussion and the follow-up discussion, rather than have someone typically make a statement afterwards and not a question that perhaps others in the audience would want to or delegates would want to then think about. Um, our chairs will be queued up to uh, try to avoid as much as possible by asking people to ask questions, not just make statements unless they're really important. And then the last point, and then I'll come back to some of the things in the chat box here that I've got to share with you, is as I've already said, we're very conscious of the cost of an event like this. In fact, you'll also be receiving from us uh, some of our commitments that we, we've tried to design the conference around. I've already mentioned sustainability, but one of these is about making the conference as impactful as possible. But you have a role too. So um, by all means, we know that if you put your slides up on some place beforehand, um, you can link out through the conference app or via Twitter or what other channel you may want to use because people in the conference will probably have lots of different back channels. Put your slides up there first, make sure you know people that they're there afterwards. Um, obviously tweet, tell people what room you're going to be talking, why they might come to your presentation. You know, your title makes a big difference, but if you haven't got a title, that's quite what you think is going to generate the crowd. Tell people why it is that they should be in the room at the certain time because you've got something really important to say. And the conference doesn't end when your presentation ends and you go out of that room. You've got a job to do to then make sure you go up and talk to those people who also ask questions. So if there's one tip that I would have for any presenter is it's too often thinking that your presentation is just during the presentation time itself. Um, and really the conference is about that networking opportunity and the presentation is the way for you to get to a wider audience of people that you might not know otherwise. Um, I'll stop on that note and just take a quick look here at some of the um, things that have come through. So yes, there will be a conference app. Um, assume people will be able to access the papers through this beforehand, absolutely. And for the full papers, um, there are about 140 of those, 145, I think, if I recall that slide earlier. Um, all of those full papers, three or 4,000 words, will be available before the conference. They'll be available through the app. We're actually just working our way through, smoothing them out, making sure that they are um, of the quality that we would expect. And they will all be published post the conference as well in a form that has academic standing. Um, for those that need that for their um, institutional purposes and being blunt sometimes for just promotion purposes. And will there be a speaker view <coughs> on the PC at the podium? At the podium? Um, you will have, um, as I understand it, so it's a good question, I actually have a site visit on Monday. Um, as I understand it, the computer will be a laptop that will give you the laptop view. Um, and then you'll have the, the screen. So you'll have both those views, but that's an important consideration for those of you who are standing there and you need that little prompt um, and to know what's coming next. Um, so that's a very good question. I wouldn't advise you to use uh, the notes function necessarily because without knowing the setup in the room and small amount of time, you're probably better to have those on a hard copy if you, if you need them. Um, the conference app, um, we're just working on that right now, but we expect the app will be available from about two weeks prior to the conference. Um, I always have mixed feelings about conference apps. Sometimes I don't bother at all. So if we can't ensure that the information in the app and the opportunities for you to converse in the app are meaningful, then we'll, we'll fail one of our commitments. Um, so I'll put that out there and see how well we live up 
to it. Of course, we are constrained by the design of conference apps and perhaps that's an area that still needs a little bit more work. But of course, the back channel via Twitter and other social media is just as important. Uh, Twitter stream will be integrated into the app. I'll see what I've got next here. Um, when I was just doing a little prep for this, I then just reminded myself there's a heap of information by Google or whatever, whatever search you want to use. Um, in TED, they have this really quite nice set of talks around how to give a persuasive talk. Um, I guess the, revest, the, the reason to do this is beyond the conference itself. And in my own talks, I'm increasingly trying to think of metaphors, more engaging ways that I can leave an a impact with the audience, something that they go away still thinking about, because that's usually my measure of success, not the level of questions, but have I got people thinking? Have I got them thinking in a way they may not have been prior to the conference? Um, so without much further ado, I've really come uh, to the end of what I had prepared here. Um, we'll see if there's anything else come through. By way of um, your best tip, I hope you've been able to follow the chat box there, but I'm just scrolling down um, to see what else people have to say. Uh, really nice point there at the start from someone saying, ask your audience what they want to know when you first start. Um, that's a basic principle of teaching, is it not? Find out um, who is in your audience and what they're interested in. Of course, that has to be balanced with depending on the length of your talk. But sometimes less, again, is more. A bit of a cliche. And sometimes the question is the answer. I said that previously. So knowing what the questions are, you're able to feed off that. And we've even made the suggestion in the guidelines that, you know what, it would be very refreshing not to have any slides whatsoever. Um, obviously, that's uh, a bit of a risk in some cases because you can enhance your presentation with some slides. Um, there's no doubt about that. Uh, I'll stop talking, see if anyone wants to use the microphone or put a question in the chat. But there's probably lots I haven't shared, lots I could have answered um, if we had perhaps even more people but you will be getting that information. It's quite detailed, as you will see, so I would encourage you to read that well before you start preparing your presentation slides. Um, and any questions, my email is available. Um, it's not that hard to find anyone, and I'm pretty responsive, you will find, because our team here at Dublin City University and the National Institute for Digital Learning, one of our commitments is to do everything possible to ensure that this is a great conference. Of course, what we mean by a great conference could be debatable depending upon your perspective. We're putting as much effort into the social program as we are into the academic program because ultimately it's the people that will make the conference. So I'll stop talking, see if anyone wants to talk. Otherwise, that's pretty much a wrap. Yeah, there's a question there. Um, this came up actually in an email yesterday about connecting with others for accommodation, for shared accommodation. Um, the response to an email that came through yesterday uh, was that we did suggest they may at this point want to use uh, some of the social media channels of the conference. That might be a bit uh, risky for someone, but we're actually very constrained in Europe, if you're not in Europe, um, under what's known as the GDPR. So uh, our data protection rules mean that we can't share with you any information about other delegates who might be looking. What we might think about over the weekend is see if there's a way, or if you've got an idea, by all means email me, a way of putting uh, some kind of closed conversation where someone can put on a board that they're interested in, uh, in finding and sharing accommodation. Dublin is as expensive as, as London in many respects now, um, that said, there are a range of accommodation options. If you haven't already done so, you may want to have a look at DCU's own website where we offer accommodation. It's just a little bit far from the conference every day, but then again, um, there are good 
transportation networks in Dublin, buses everywhere, and if you're saving a um, hundred or so euro a day, then you probably don't mind spending two or three euro on a bus and getting up a little earlier. Lots of Airbnb options, bread and breakfast options, but of course sharing that cost was not a um, silly idea. So hopefully you appreciate we can't share any individual details, but what we'll think about over the weekend is a mechanism we can use to uh, facilitate uh, a board of some kind where people can let themselves, let others know that they're interested in sharing and willing to share. So that was a good question just because, again, the cost of this conference and accommodation for the period is not insignificant. Okay, folks, if you've got any other uh, thoughts or um, questions that I didn't answer, please do email me. I take a lot of personal responsibility with the team that we have here in putting on a really great event, something that's going to not just um, be over the four days in November or if you're coming beforehand for the pre-conference, but also that really at this time in the field of online learning, open, distance, blended forms of education, all of those things morph together, gives us a chance to really shape the future. And I say that quite seriously because we have an audience of policy makers and politicians whom we need to help, I think, better understand the opportunities, but also some of the threats we face. And the conference will certainly be designed to engage in healthy debate about where we go in the future. So on that note, have a good day, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all in November, if not before. Thank you.